Yeah, I think so. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Boobies Beer and Banter, sponsored by Magic Rock. <laughs> Firstly, can I thank you all for joining us again tonight? Really appreciate it. And I'm sure we're all sat a little bit happier than we were this time last week. Uh, great result against Forest. Good performance as, as well. And you look at the table now and it looks a little bit, we've got a bit of breathing space, haven't we? So hopefully a point, or definitely three points, and we'll be watching Championship football again next season. So fingers crossed, we'll get some at of Blackburn this Saturday. So just before we start, like usual, if you want to ask any questions, just write it in the chat and I'll ask the question for you. You can ask as many questions as you want, or you can just sit and listen to his guests. It's entirely up to you, to yourselves. So introducing our guest tonight, again, two fans' favourites, uh, played nearly 500 games between them. I dare say we can describe them as no-nonsense, tough-tackling defenders. We've got Kev Gray and Tom Cowan. Evening, lads. Good evening. Good evening. Kev, Tom, thanks for joining us. I'm sure you're wondering where, where this third guest is. Uh, obviously, Ben. Well, Ben rang me this afternoon. Unfortunately, he works for Man United now uh, and works on MUTV. And because of the, the Super League, what's happened this week and, and what's been in the news, unfortunately, he's been told he can't do any media work for the foreseeable future. So Ben rang up and just sent his apologies to everybody. Uh, he'd love to have joined us, but obviously, when work says you can't do anything, he's, he's not being able to. So he sends all his best wishes on. He, he said he'd be love to, to to see, obviously, Tom and, and Kev again and everybody else. But I'm sure we'll 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 catch up with him, him later. So so while we start, and I'm sure we'll probably get this in the chat. Let's talk. What about the Super League this week? It's been absolutely embarrassing, hasn't it? Tom, what are your thoughts about this week? Uh, slightly embarrassing, um, considering there's so much going on in the world at the moment and that becomes the biggest story. I know it is quite a big story, but it's just greed. I think it's all down to greed. Um, six, six English clubs and Spurs, where, where did Tottenham Hotspur come, come involved in that? I know you love that club, but how would they be even involved in something like that? It's a joke, isn't it? It's embarrassing and absolute, absolute em, em, embarrassing it is what's that? So at least Kev, they've made the right decision at the end. They've all made, I'm not saying they, they've seen sense, they've uh, they've come to the right decision in the end, Kev, haven't they? Of course they have, yeah. I mean, as, as Tom said, it is just pure greed, really. And uh, it would it would spoil not only the league, but... Uh, I mean, I don't know whether they'd be allowed to play in the FA Cup and things like that if they if they join the Super League, um, and that'd also spoil it for lower league clubs. So yeah, yeah. right decision, sacked it off. Definitely, they've, made, they've come to the senses, haven't they? So before we get to a few yeah. questions, what are you doing now, lads? Obviously, we know when you retired, neither of you stayed in football. I know you had a little bit of spell coaching and managing, Tom. But what have you been doing for the last few years, Tom? Uh, 13 years in South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Best decision ever made. Uh, went up to Gretna and did the football in the community thing and moved into the youth team. And then it all went a bit wrong there. Uh, things started going upside down with, with the money and finances and stuff like that, which happens to a lot of clubs. And uh, I just thought I would need something a bit more steady in my life. So I ended up joining Fire, fire and Rescue Service. In South Yorkshire as well, which was quite lucky because I live in Sheffield, it was on my doorstep. I, I got into Staffordshire first and uh, I was going to be travelling up and down. And then I got a, an email from South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue just saying, Congratulations, you're on. I think it was starting in December for Staffordshire. And then it was April, of course, that it was starting uh, for South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue. So 13 years, it's been absolutely brilliant. As soon as I joined, right enough, we went on strike. So that was typical, isn't it? Go for something a bit more steady and then you go on strike right away. Yeah, so, but apart from that, everything's been brilliant. I love it. Love my job. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Brilliant. And don't you have to be over six foot to be a fireman? I thought you had to be tall. No. He's got, he's got yeah, a ladder. No, you could jump over <laughs> six foot, so I was all right, wasn't I? <laughs> well, you could, yeah, to be fair, you could jump tall. Obviously, you said you work in Sheffield. Have you ever been... 
notice, like, have you ever been saving somebody from a fire and uh, said, oh, that's Tom Cowan, that? No. <laughs> no. No. I'm, I've got one of those bit instantly forgettable faces. Thankfully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about you, Kev? I'm sure you went into the farming industry, didn't you? No, mate. Last 13 years, I've been starting fires, keeping Tom in business. <laughs> what have you been doing? Well, I've been uh, all sorts, to be fair. Mainly in engineering, um, fabrication, welding, stuff like that. So, um, basically, since I left, yeah, since I left football, that's about it. Oh, and that, that Enjoy. Was, yeah, oh, that's the main thing. And, and do you used to have a steam engine in your, in your back garden? Still got them, mate, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Sheffield. Came, that's been the last time I've seen him. He came to Sheffield, where? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Where I'm at, at the pub. Well, we'll be there again this year, Tom. Brilliant. I'll meet you again then, pal. Yeah, definitely. I'll let you know. Well, hopefully, if it's on anyway. Yeah. Yeah, if it's on. <laughs> Spot on. Let's get, let's get back to some football then. Oh, let's stop. Yeah, no. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> go on back. Go. I know that. Yeah, you're struggling when you talk about football, Kev. <laughs> Tom, obviously, you started at Clyde, Tom, and I remember, well, I, I read something that obviously. You were all the clubs were, were watching you. They were they're taking note of you. And did you go down to see Brian Clough at Forest? Teddy Venables wanted you at Spurs. Tell us about that. And also, how did Rangers get in touch with you to say that they wanted to sign you? Where did you hear that one from? You must have heard that one somewhere. I've been, doing, I've been doing my homework, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I'm natural this. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Um, they'd all bid 100 grand. I think it was Nottingham Forest that bid 100 grand. And uh, that was the only club that we were interested to begin with. So there was me and a lad called Martin Clark, who was a sweeper at the time, uh, had to go down. They, they bid on him as well. So we went down and we were met at the airport, East Midlands Airport, by the assistant manager. And he said, oh, it's raining, so Brian's not at the football club, so we'll just go straight to his house. I was like, all right, yeah, no problem. So I went to Brian Clark's house, and the first thing he said is, get your effing coat off in my house, son. And I was like, oh. <laughs> lovely man <laughs> yeah, so he just, he just tried to bribe me more than anything it was like yeah he gave us like I, think it was, well, I can't even remember it was like a European Championship plate Nottingham Forest plate and stuff like that and pants, pants for the wife and stuff like that knickers just all stuff like that uh, and I, I just I had said at the time I don't I don't really fancy making a decision here and now he says I'll, I'll go home and think about it and speak to my parents about it. Uh, Martin Clark, he signed there and then. And uh, I went home and on the way back, we flew back to Glasgow Airport and there was a scout with one of those big, massive mobile phones, big, huge one with a big aerial sitting at the top. And he says, I've got Terry Venables on the phone for you. And I was like, yeah, whatever. He went, no, honestly, I have. And I went, oh, go on then, I'll, 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 I'll talk to him. Just think it was a wind up, and it was, it was it was Terry Venables. He's like, I want you to sign at Spurs uh, right away. I want you to come down and go straight into my first team because I know for a fact that Brian Clough will told you you're going into the reserves first. And I says, well, actually, he did. Yeah, I says, but I need to make a decision now, and I don't want to go down to London. I was brought on Scotland and never left Scotland, and I thought oh, I don't want to, I don't want to leave now and go down to London. So I poo pooed him right away, and then. Uh, Went back to work. I was working for Clydesdale. Clydesdale Tube Works for British Steel. And um, we were just working one day and one of the lads came up and said, it's been on the radio, Clyde, that you have to phone your mum. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, yeah, that is a proper wind up. I'm not, I'm not phoning my mum. He went, no, honestly, if you phone your mum, uh, it's, uh, it's something to do with Rangers Football Club. And I was like, ah. no, this is proper wind up. But anyway, I ended up phoning my mum and she was like, ah, yeah, it's Walter Smith had phoned up and uh, they want to meet you. Uh, you, him and Graham Tunis want to meet up with you. They want to sign you. So I think once that, once Rangers had come in, it, it was done and dusted because I was brought up, I was brought up a mobile fan, but you were either brought up a Protestant or a Catholic in Scotland and I was brought up a Protestant and your second team's always Rangers. And uh, so from there on, I, that's it. So I went and signed for Rangers. And then, obviously, you went to Rangers, played there, uh, and then went down to Sheffield. And I, I didn't realise this, 
but you played it most of the the first ever Premier League season, didn't you? What was that ninety two, ninety one, ninety two? Realise it. Yeah. So, what was the difference between you played Sheffield United in the League One, well, Division One, and yeah. then into the Premier League? What what was the difference that first year? I didn't realise you played in that, Tom. <laughs> it was just the hype about it more than anything. I think it was more Sky Sports hyped it up more, didn't they? So that was it. it. It was the same division. It was just the top division in English football. Uh, we had a good first year. We stayed up. Um, and then second year, uh, that was when we beat Manchester United in the first game of the season. Uh, the first Premier League game. To be, no, the first ever Premier League game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was, it was a good few years. Uh, Sheffield United thoroughly enjoyed it, but the best years came after that, <laughs> which we're going to come on to tell, I'm sure. And, and Ken, you, yeah, so you joined Uddersfield. Uh, well, Neil Warnock signed you, didn't he? And he did, he, he didn't play you for that first year. I think you only played about four or five games. And right. how frustrating with that because you, you went from Mansfield, your club captain, playing every game, coming to Uddersfield. I'm sure you must have thought you'd come straight in the team and, and five games all season. It must have been so frustrating. It, it was frustrating, but, you know, I, I, I never I never thought that I'd be straight in the team, to be fair. And then when you've seen uh, the competition, obviously you got Pat Scully and uh, Lee Sinnott playing there, um, you know, and they, they were playing well. So it was just, just a matter of uh, biding the time and waiting. Played one, once or twice, I think, uh, a few games. But no, no, it was a good move for me anyway from from Mansfield. So um, I kind of, you know, kind of just had to be patient. It weren't, it weren't a great move for, for me, though, though, Kev. When I thought, why have we, my first initial thoughts were, why have we signed him? And I don't know, you might have forgotten, but you're the reason that I've got bad knees. You, what? You, you're. <laughs> I can't, I'm sat here now, I can't bend my knee because of you. Because we played that against Mansfield. So it was my third ever game and we played at the old Leeds Road. We won 2-1 and thankfully I scored the first goal in front of the cow shed. That was something I'd always dreamt of, scoring in the cow shed. So you were marking me, Kev, so I'd just like to thank you for, for allowing me to do that so early <laughs> in my career. But, You've made Brody's career, Kev. Yes. Honestly, that was my ambition. That was my ambition to score in front of the cow shed. Obviously, well, I've all my life, and Kev let me do it. But the problem, you still have paid me for that. Well, we had a right battle that that game. So obviously, we yeah. played minutes, and we, we really had battling against each other. And then we both found ourselves in the reserves on the Wednesday night at Leeds Road, at Leeds Road again. And <laughs> don't ask me why we both ended up playing. So again, we had we had a right battle, and after about seventy five minutes. We'd both gone up for an header, and I might have used my elbow a little bit to, on you. And next thing, you stamped on me. We're both on the floor, and you, you, you got your st- and you stamped right, right in me. And I, you know, don't, got, remember, don't remember that at all, mate. I'm not gonna. I won't forget that because I got up quickly, my knee locked, so I went out for five months. Six <laughs> knee operations later, I'm, I can I can hardly walk, and I can't bend my knee, so. I think you've got a little apology to make to me, surely. Yeah, all right, sorry. <laughs> That's fair enough. Well, that was heartfelt, Kev. Say again. <laughs> that was heartfelt, that, sorry, wasn't it? Oh, I, I meant it from the bottom of my heart, I tell you. Oh, well, I don't remember any of that, to be fair. I, I remember it. I still remember it now, I can. Why we were playing at reserves that day, I don't, I don't know why. We just played no, Because you scored against him. That's why yep. he was in the reserves. Yeah, but, probably. Yeah. yeah, but why were I in the reserves? When I was at Mansfield, I, ne- I played nearly every game for about three seasons, first team and reserves. <laughs> and, t- and Tommy, why did you come to the club? Obviously, we've talked about Sheffield United. You were playing in the Premier League first division. And w- why did you? We were rock bottom of the league. What made you join Huddersfield? I think it was Neil more than anything. Neil was brilliant. Uh, I'd been on on loan to Stoke in the Championship now, so the old First Division, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And they were they were trying to sign me for the three months that I was there, and uh, it didn't happen. Uh, I think I went through three managers. I think Lou McCary left, went to Celtic, 
Chicken Bates took over for a month. He left and went to Celtic. And then um, Joe Jordan came in as a manager. And they just tried to do a deal with, with Dave Bassett to sign me, and it didn't happen. And it was it was probably the best thing that, that did happen that I didn't sign for them. Because they ended up, Neil phoned us and said, towards the end of the season, do you want to come? And I, and I had to get out of Sheffield United because I was just sitting in the reserves, not doing anything, because he'd, he'd bombed me out after that. He'd bought a lad called Roger Nielsen uh, from a Swedish team, and he was playing left back. And I, I wasn't going to look in, so I had to get out. I had to go and play football. And I think that's the, that's the mentality of back then was you just wanted to play. I think now it's a bit different, isn't it? People just sit in the reserves and take their money and not bother about sitting on the bench or anything like that. Whereas back then, everybody wanted to play football. And uh, I, I came to Huddersfield. And from, from day one, even the old Leeds Road Stadium, Thoroughly enjoyed it. It was brilliant, and it was, a, it was a good club. And obviously, with the, the new stadium, the, the way the club was moving ahead, it just it was like a progressive club. And I thought I'd, I'd love to sign here. Although I did say to Neil at the time that if any other club could come in any higher, I would probably go there. But if any club in that division, which was League Two or League One now, um, then I would definitely sign for him. And I think Bradford came in for me. And I did, it was at Lenny Lawrence was the manager at the time. I think it was Lenny Lawrence. And he, he offered me a lot more money than Huddersfield, but I'd already gave him a word to, to Neil that I would sign for, for him in that, that league. So I ended up coming to Huddersfield and the best decision I ever made. Right. And, and for the Huddersfield, for Huddersfield and Huddersfield fans, definitely the best uh, decision, Tom. I don't know about that. Not gonna, you, you, obviously, we came, we were at the bottom of the league and... I think we won the next 10 games. We finished halfway up the table. So you, you mentioned that you played in the very last game of Old League Road. You played in the very first game of the new stadium. Well, obviously, that, that, there's not many players that did that. And also, let's talk about that little that game at Autoglass final. And nil-nil, come to penalties. Talk us through your penalty. Probably the worst penalty I've ever seen on when. On Wembley Stadium. I can't remember that booth. I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't. <laughs> you no, know I'm what? not letting you get away with that. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I, I used to take free kicks. I used to take penalties. Everything. I used to take everything. From that day forward, I never took another penalty. Never took another one. And I, and I was I was so confident before it as well. And when I hit it, I just thought, my God. The goalkeeper had to run out to collect it. It was that, I ran up that slow to him. I was like, oh, my God, what have I just done? In front of him, was it about 20 odd thousand there or something? No, 60 odd, there were 60 odd thousand. Yeah. All... Yeah. <laughs> right, wow. That, that makes it even more embarrassing then. Well, what I can what I can remember is, <laughs> we're there, Graham Mitchell's missed, Pat Scully scored, uh, Starby had missed. So, Tom, you've come up and we're thinking, you've got to score. For us to stay in the game, you've got to score. So we're on halfway line, and you've you've taken and it, you were right. It, did, it didn't reach the goal, it did it. It, no, went, it was awful. awful. So we're on halfway line, thinking, what do we do? Do we laugh or cry? <laughs> because we're bad at penalty, and it looked bad if we started laughing when when we've got the final. But that's yeah. how bad it was, wasn't it? Well, that was why normally I'd have been dead confident all the way up to that, and I never took one after that. Even well, the semi final, wasn't it? When we played Brentford in the semi final of the playoffs a year after, he asked me, Neil said, You fancy a penalty? And I went, Nope, not me. No, if it comes down to the goalkeepers, let them go before me, and then I'll go. <laughs> and that, I think that was definitely a right, wise decision. Right, yeah, definitely, yeah. To, the, to the questions, I've, I've been asking all questions, I do apologise. So, but Andrew, can you read Tom's book? Uh, he's read it and he said it's a great read. Have you, have you read Tom's book? I haven't, no. Funny old thing. He's never sent me one. I've not got any left. Keep I mean, giving them out. Them left. I've only got two left myself. They fell apart. Oh, well. What were they, what were they about, Tom? I've never read it. No. <laughs> it was about, about that year I was out injured now in my knee. That was the yeah. year. And uh, I think the club were struggling and Jacko had come in and uh, we just just beat relegation. It was, it was quite like an up and down year. Uh, but it was more about the, the struggle they try to get back into the team and stuff like that. So that was what it was about that year out. So the second, well, there's a couple of questions here for Ken. 
Kev, who is your favourite centre back partner and why? Lee Sinner at Huddersfield. Well, well, it does help with all Huddersfield fans, so it would help if it Huddersfield. Yeah, Lee, Lee Sinner. When I first got in the team, he was a he, he was a massive, a massive help to me. To be honest with you, just a good lad. But I can I, I can honestly say there's n- none of the lads that have, have um, played at centre half with have uh, have been a problem at all. They've all been great. Left left back was always a trouble, but uh, centre back spot on. Every single one of them, to be honest. But if I had to pick one, there's, there's Lee Sinnott, probably Dark John Dyson, um, and I think I think Jenks played there a few times. So uh, it, you know, he was another one. I think, like you talk about Johnny Dyson there. Johnny was so underrated. Wasn't he? he had he yeah. had everything. He was quick. He was good on the. He was. He could use both feet. Good in the air. Good tackle. He had everything, didn't he? But he was just a bit underrated. He was. He was very underrated, and that was a that was a bit of a problem for him. I think um, it, he should have played a lot more games in the first team than he did. And I think he had a spell in midfield, didn't he? Centre midfield, and even yeah, did a, he even even did a great job there. To be honest with you, well, I can, I can remember when we had a couple of good Coca Cola Cup draws, like we played Arsenal, uh, and he he were. He had to man mark Ian Wright. We played Southampton. He had to man mark Letizia. And it, 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 well, even though they all scored, I think Wright scored that trick. I think Johnny will always do it. But yeah, he went man at match for every game of that. He, yeah. he a good footballer with Johnny, wasn't he? Very, very good. Yeah, he was. Uh, he were very, very underrated, as you say, but uh, spot top. And and second question for you, Tom: the perils of car sharing with Andy Morrison. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, honestly, the story to that. Wow. Have you heard about the Lilla Show one? Yeah. Oh, God. No, no, we went no, to Lilla no. Show together, didn't we? Because I, I'd done my knee, and I, I don't know what, I think Andy had done his knee as well. Oh, and uh, so. we'd went to, I think we'd went into town, and I was driving. Uh, one, one of the nights that they let you out you now for a pint, and we went into town uh, just outside Lilla Show, and I was driving back and we were driving on a 60 mile an hour country road. And I was going about 55 and he went, slow down. And I went, what? He went, slow down. I went, what speed do you want me to go? He said, 40. And I went, it's a 60 mile an hour road, Jock. What do you want me to do? I said, we need to get home. And he went, slow down. And, <laughs> and I was like, ah, it's getting quite serious now. So I'd, I'd gone a lot. I think I'd gone from 55 up to about 60 as we were, as we were talking. And he went, I'm not joking. If you don't slow down now, I'm going to punch you. And I thought, no way. I'm, I'm slowing down. All the way down to about 40 mile an hour. And it took us about 20 more minutes to get home just because he told me to slow down. Uh, and to be fair, car sharing as well, Kev. Kev car shared with us as well, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, used to go up and down the motorway M1 all the time at Huddersfield. And uh, he had, uh, was it an M3 BMW? And he was the fastest driver I've ever known in my life. And he's telling me to slow down. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> You're a nightmare. It's brilliant, brilliant. Oh, right player as well. No, no, I don't best. think there was many centre-forwards that uh, didn't come off second best against him. No. no. I remember playing against Jock when he was at Blackwall. They were... They were Andy Morrison and, and it were Briggs, another tough cent, obviously, two tough centre halves. And I'd been out for about four weeks with an ankle injury. And after five minutes, I've, I've got the ball and Jock's come straight through me and, and done my ankle. And he says, is that your bad ankle? Get yourself off, son. And I says, no, it would be the other one, but it is now. And ended up getting carried off like, he was an animal, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh. It was brilliant. Yeah. So from Dan Kev, okay, what's the biggest dar- bigger derby? Uh, bigger, uh, what's the bigger derby? Yeah, derby versus Mansfield or Huddersfield versus Bradford? Well, obviously Huddersfield versus Bradford. That was always always a big one, weren't it? Um, you know, we uh, played a few of them, obviously, but uh, yeah, that 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 was a that was a bigger one. That was a bigger one. But while we've come to obviously Huddersfield versus. Bradford, and I'm not going to mention the tackle, Kev, but I remember... Well, you just have. 
<laughs> well, I have mentioned it, yeah. But I've got to mention it to come on to it. Uh, but I remember you telling me the story about what happened to you. Obviously, you, the tackle, Gordon Watson took you to court. Tell us about what happened to you and in the months leading to the court case. Uh, it was it was a, it was horrendous. To be fair, I mean, obviously, it was um, there were things like death threats kicking about. Uh, hate mail was was a start, um, and then they were just. Uh, I remember, you know, death threats, death threats coming in. It was it was absolutely crazy. I mean, obviously, it was it was massively hyped up by by the press, if you like, um, from 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 probably from Bradford more than others, um, and on telly and such. Forth. But uh, no, nah, no, nah, it was it wasn't it wasn't a good. It wasn't a good time, to be honest with you. And I, I remember you telling me that you thought at one point you were going to go to prison, didn't you? Yeah, it was serious that you, you could end up. Well, in yeah, it, it seemed like it at the time. That's, that's was, a bit old going down. It's not, it's not me, you're on it. I'm off duty now. The uh, issue, I don't on. want any fires, Kev, Tom. No, no. no. They're going out now. Car on fire. But Tom, carry up. <laughs> Making a noise. <laughs> Sorry, pal. That's all right. So, Kev, obviously, you did think at one point you could be end up end up in prison. I think, yeah, it, it, it was looking like that that way because it was, you know, the, the seriousness of it all. Um, I mean, it was. I can remember the Monday morning when we turned up at training. I think there was. I think there was me, Tom, and Gary Crosby who were sharing car at the time. Well, Jock was supposed to be with us, but uh, I think he was probably late. But anyway, um, yeah, and, and there were people stood outside um, the ground at Uddersfield when we were getting there and uh, just all going for it. And, and to be fair, Gary Crosby told him to do one. He said, you know, just... And then from that moment on, it, it was quite serious. Yeah, and you just and reading what uh, the lawyers were saying and things like that, it was it was looking probably a little bit grim at one stage. Frightening. So it moving. was it was quite frightening. I mean, it, you know, you can handle a bit of abuse. I'm not bothered about that, but when you know death threats start coming in and threatening people that you know, then that's. Uh, I mean, to be fair, the club. Huddersfield at the time they started reading you know reading the mail after that um, and probably I didn't see maybe a third uh, uh, probably you know a, a lot of what came flooding in I say frightening frightening Kev couldn't believe it. when you were telling me the story a few, <laughs> few years ago I couldn't believe it because I worked in the club then and what you went nah. were, were unbelievable yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty scary. So, cheers, Kev. Thank you. So, from, from Tom, oh. from Tom, for both of you, do you still watch Tom? And it, and if you've if you have watched us, who's your favourite player at the moment? So this could be a quick one if it's a no. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the the short one is no. I haven't I haven't watched Town for for God years now, um, and. If I'm perfectly honest, I probably don't know any of the players that are there at the minute. So, uh, to be fair, I don't really watch much football. If you never yeah. did, you never did, did you? Ken? No, no, no I never did. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I look for results and that, but uh, that's if I remember. But no, I don't. I don't watch much football, and you know, obviously, still, still want uh, town to do well, which is. Um, you know, which will always happen. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's just been a bit of trouble this year, isn't it? Really. Um, I mean, uh, I do look at the results and stuff like that, and the seven 0 drubbing against Norwich. Norwich don't score many goals. That that was a bit of a blow. Um, but I think I think we'll be all right this year. Uh, I think the the best, obviously, the Premier League years were, were amazing, weren't they? Uh, I went to the playoffs. In fact, I was in. You know, I've seen you, didn't I, when we were at the Wednesday away, weren't we? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, best, best day ever. Um, yeah, when they, when they went through the semi-finals, it was just 
amazing. But uh, I've, I've lost a bit of track with football recently. Just the, without the fans, it's nothing without the fans. It's horrible watching the Premier League and the quiet grounds and that horrible UEFA noise that they put in the background. You know, when it's raising up when there's nothing's happened. It, it's just, I've lost a bit of love here at the moment. So I'm not watching a lot of it this last year. Uh, as soon as the fans get back in, that, that'll be the main thing that happens and everyone will go back to normal. Well, would it will. Well, I'll just give a couple of questions and come back to that because you mentioned fans. It must, we've all, obviously we've all played and it. it's an event. When you played in reserves, like when me and you were playing at Leeds Road and that Wednesday when you did my but I'm not going to mention that again. Uh, <laughs> when there's no when there's no fans in, it's horrendous. So, uh, Jonathan's asked, Tom, where did the salute towards the Kilner Bank come from? Why why did it start? Obviously, fans, we won the game. Everybody's waiting for you to do your salute. Where did that start? I don't really know. I, I, I think it's just, it was more because of the predicament we were in when, when we all first came to the club. You know, at the bottom of the league and a near relegation. And I think it was the first result we got was at Reading away, one each. It was like the best, the best result ever. No one expected it. Uh, I think it was Reading. I'm not I'm most positive it was. And uh, it just sort of let stem for that. I think it was more aggression than anything else. And just get wrapped up in it. And I say because of the predicament we were in, it meant even more. Um, and it just became a thing, which was a bit weird. But, uh, and it was only just a thing with Huddersfield, no other, no other football club. I didn't do it anywhere else. It was not a thing. It was just something that happened at Huddersfield and it grew and grew and grew. And I think when uh, during the promotion season, I had a knee injury and I had to go for it and get my cartilage trimmed. And I was out for about three or four games. And you did it every one. You won without me. You did it in front of the fans. And I thought that was amazing. Shall I come clean on about that, Tom? Because we did it. It's the first time we did that. We, we played late in Orient down there. And we, and we beat them. And we got, I can remember Ronnie getting all the lads round. Lads, lads, why don't we take Mick out of Tommy? And we'll all go and do this salute. And as though, like, Everybody's waiting for it. And it's just, it really was just to take Mick out of you for doing yeah. it. And then, and it would all over examine it. Oh, team salutes Tom. Obviously, they miss him so much that they did it They did it for himself. So it backfired completely on us. <laughs> Served you right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so from, so to, to both of you, it might not be as much to you, Kim, but uh, have you any Neil Warnick stories? Is there any Warnick stories that spring to mind? <laughs> Uh, I have. Do you care? Well, I don't know whether you will probably keep me right with it, the intricacies, intricacies of it. But the cherry and raw eggs, oh my oh. God. It was the worst thing I've ever tasted in all my life. He did it in Notch County, apparently, and they went on a run, an unbeaten run. And they brought it in at Huddersfield. And I can't remember, it was at Swansea away, it was the first game. It was something like, I remember us being in a hotel and we had all these glasses uh, with a shot of sherry in it and with this uh, big tray of eggs and everyone walked in uh, during, was it just after pre-match, wasn't it? And he's like, yeah. right, when he's out here, sherry and raw egg. And like, oh, no chance. I'm going to vomit rings around about myself. Uh, to be fair, I think we went something like 15 games unbeaten. Yeah, we did it every game before every yeah. game, and we had to have a meeting with just the players. And, I, and I, this is the bit where I'm I'm probably making stuff up, but we said we can't win this next game. We need to throw something in to like a, like a draw or something like that. And I think we ended up drawing, and he stopped it from then on. And because uh, it was the worst thing ever, Steve used to do it, didn't he? And then go straight to the toilet and vomit it back up again. It was horrendous. I'm I didn't mind it, to be fair. Oh, but you wouldn't, though, would you? <laughs> it was well, all right. Drank, uh, my, my God, stuff you used to drink. My God, that was that good stuff for you. <laughs> but can you, can you remember? We, there were always one left as well, weren't there? One. Yeah. made sure they were tw they did whatever, 16. So there were one spare. And we had to vote who oh, wanted another one. And we always used to vote Seeves, didn't we? Because he, Yeah, Seeves. He'd go throw up straight away. Hated it. Brilliant. 
Yeah, that's that's my warm up story. Apart, apart from that, nothing nothing else that's no, uh, conversationable. How how surprised were you then when when and shocked when he announced his uh, they were leaving the club? Can you remember where they were when it when he announced his he were leaving? No, where I was. No, I can't. I, no, oh, were we weird. Were we at do somewhere in the George Hotel? Yeah, I, mean, I, can't, I can't believe you, I can't believe you can't remember. No, I've got the worst memory ever, honestly. I've got terrible memory. But go and Kev, go and tell the story. I don't know. I I think it was at do in the George Hotel, weren't it? No, it was on. It was on the coach coming back from Wembley. Just we just won the playoff, we just won the playoff final. And can you remember he brought a box of cigars round with like big. Yeah. Big foot, well, whatever, six inch cigars, and he gave us all a cigar and got us a glass of champagne. And, and, he, and, he, and he said, Lads, what we've done today has been a massive achievement. The season's been fantastic, uh, and I'm going to enjoy this time. But I've got something to tell you I'm, I'm leaving, I'm, go, I'm, I'm going down to Plymouth. Can you remember that, Tom? I can't, I no, I, I can't remember that. Memory. Was no. that the game when Seed scored at Wembley? Yeah. Yeah, you struggle to remember that, Kev. Yeah, I really. Uh, I've, got, hey. I've got a bad memory, but that is terrible. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the playoff oh final. I can I, well, I can remember that because I, well, I didn't play, but uh, I can remember that, and I was on the bus, but I don't remember him coming around with cigars. Well, I don't remember Neil coming around and doing that. No, I think both is making it up. Unless I've dreamt it, I might have dreamt it, and I've been. I think, I think you're making it up, mate. The last 20 odd years, 25, what, 25 years, that's what I've been telling everybody. That's been one of your favourite stories, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's my only story. And that, <laughs> I don't remember that at all. No, I don't. Right, moving on quickly then. From yeah. Paul, Kev, when at, town, or when at town, didn't you have a loan spell at Stockport for, for one game? Yeah. About? It, was, it, was, uh, it was supposed to be for a month. I think, because I think it was Mossy who went there, Dave Moss. And uh, the first the first game I was supposed to play at Stockport, I got food poisoning a couple of days before <laughs> and probably had, well, one of the worst games I ever had. I was that tired and just, obviously, with food poisoning, it just drains you, doesn't it? Yeah. And I should have said I weren't going to play because I weren't well. And uh, ended up playing, and it, that that was that. Uh, for I think I played half a game, weren't even a full game, and uh, and that <laughs> just never went back. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of ones, then Kev, didn't you when you had Chamia and your only goal you scored again for Chamia was against was Sud- Huddersfield? It was. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was probably the only game I played as well. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that as well. I, I can remember when when the ball went in and I started celebrating, there was a big guy behind the goal, jumped up and wanted to get on the pitch and kill me. The hatred in his face was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was. That was... Uh, and I thought, oh, God, I hope the security people don't let him on the pitch because he is going to have me. <laughs> and Tom, talking of, of, of goals... Somebody, well, it's not on the chat, but we're talking about it. What was your favourite goal at town? West Brom away, I think. Uh, yeah, it was. I think we were. It was. We were one nil down, or it was, or it was nil nil. Oh, you! I think you scored, Tom. To put us ahead. Oh, was that it? Was it the first I think one? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a winner. What was it a winner? I think so. Yeah, if I remember. Nil. I think we won one nil. Yeah, I remember, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was about thirty yards out. Uh, can't use my left, my, my right foot, so obviously using my left and, and hit it. And it was, um, I think Paul Crichton was in goals, and uh, I went to Burnley after that, didn't I? And Crichton was in goals, uh, at Burnley, and I used to travel in with him, and I used to remind him every day about that goal. I remember from thirty yards out, pal. <laughs> he didn't like it. I think Paul Crichton came to to Woodersfield as goalkeeping coach. I think later on, I, I might be wrong. I think, I, I think it is. Though. but talking of goals, he mentioned that's when he said he said he'll say West Brom uh, a goal of his favourite, and then he said 
You scored a goal from a throw-in against Barnsley. Barnsley. Yeah, we've got a Barnsley lad. Uh, well, obviously, South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue. It's got two stations in Barnsley. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a lad that was on my course, and uh, he, he mentioned it right away. And I went, no, I'm sure one of the defenders touched it. And uh, he, every time I speak to him, he, he keeps telling me about that goal. And he keeps everybody, everybody else around about him as well. You know, Tom scored the fair throw in. You're like, oh, God, not again. Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and, didn't Andy Morrison have to claim it? Sorry? Andy Morrison had to claim, because I don't think you're allowed to score from a throw in, are you? No, but I think they, they said that one of the defenders... Is, is, uh, I thought it was Jock yeah, yeah. yeah. jo that had tried to claim it. Yeah, but I ran away claiming it like an idiot. You did. <laughs> yeah, I know we are, fool. <laughs> now, this is, this is a dangerous question from Ryan. To, to, to both of you, how did you find the Huddersfield nightlife? <laughs> you. Never went out. Yeah, we didn't go out, did we? Never went out. Never went out. Uh, we were total professionals, us. Yeah, it was, was great. It was was that? Was that pub just next to the, next to the ground called? Oh, Spinner's Arms. Spinner's Arms. That was a Wednesday. Uh, it was a Wednesday night. Oh, All right. Night. Spinner's Arms and down to Visage. That's Stripper's Night Wednesday night, wasn't it? No. <laughs> Moving on quickly. Let's move on. It's a <laughs> Can you remember Johnny's? Is that, is that still on the go? Johnny? No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. But remember you, Kim, when on a night out, you'd, you drank cider, didn't you? All you did was drink cider, didn't you? Yeah, and Jack Daniels. Yeah, and that, and that was it. And soon as we were in a nightclub, you were on dance floor for about four hours, weren't you? And you were the sweatiest person ever. And you used to sweat for fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty sweet. Pretty much the same now, mate. Just can't dance. Well, never been able to dance. <laughs> you couldn't, I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, very, very sweaty. Let's, uh, let's move on quickly from that question. From, okay. Tom, what were the, did you once end up in the goal for part of the game? You did, didn't you? For who? For Huddersfield, yeah. Huddersfield, yeah. yes. QPR. Was it, was yeah, it home QPR game? It was um, FA Cup, wasn't it? And uh, Tony Norman had pulled his hamstring, and what, Neil hadn't put anybody on the bench, goalkeeping wise. I think Billy, I think Billy said he fancied it, and I went, "No, I want to, I want to go and go." Um, and I made, I made a couple of saves, but it was my old teammates, the Rangers, was up front was Mark Haley and John Spencer, and they were both up front for QPR that day as well. And it was Mark Haley that scored from. 25 yards out and made a couple of reasonable saves and I mean the hardest thing in the world is to all over the halfway line from a goal kick which I've found <laughs> it's horrible that uh, yeah but he scored from 25 yards a proper little grass cutter bobbler and any goalkeeper would have got it and I I, I was like oh, no way and he, he was like winding me up constantly after the game saying I thought I'd have got it there <laughs> Well, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just skipping on a bit from, from John. T Tommy, who do you think is the best goalkeeper then? Me or you? Because I went in goal against Liverpool and, and I scored, I saved two Michael Owen one-on-ones. So, What was the score though? We drew, we drew one one Jamie Redknapp scored a free kick against me. That was my first touch getting the ball out of the net and then, and then I, I made some saves. But I know what you mean. I couldn't reach... I could, I, could, I, would, I could reach only halfway into our yard. It's horrible, isn't it? It's horrible. It's yeah. the worst thing ever. I'd yeah. say we'd be on a parlay in me and you because both results were the same. We drew one each with QPR and we took it back to Huddersfield for the return leg, didn't we? <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll take it as a draw then, Tom. <laughs> okay. So, moving on from Tom, what's the best memories at town that you, that you can remember both of you? Kev? Uh, well, to be fair, most of it, it was, uh, I, can't, I think I was there for seven or eight years, I can't remember, and I, I, I don't think I ever had a bad a bad week or a bad day there. I mean, obviously, you, you know, with pre-season and that, it's not the best, and then you, you get uh, Lou Macari coming in as a manager and decided to absolutely flog you on a Friday before a game, but... Uh, 
they still were they still were bad times. You know, it, it made you it made you better, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed my whole time at Huddersfield. Uh, exact same as Kev. And to be fair, I think it was to do with our team spirit, and mm. you'll both agree with me here. Uh, it's probably the best club that I've been at. The uh, team spirit was amazing. It was like yeah. we, we didn't have a kangaroo court to start with, but we, we did it for a while, didn't we? Whereas yeah. if, you weren't, if you weren't out or if you didn't go out, uh, then you were fine. And it was like a serious fine. It'd be like, well, for us, it'd be like a serious fine would be a fiver, wouldn't it? By then. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the, the team was. spirit was amazing. And that was, yeah. that was the reason we got promoted. That was the reason that we lost Neil uh, and we got, uh, oh, God. Brian, uh, Brian Horton, Brian yeah, Brian Horton came and in. Dennis, and and Dennis and Booth. Booth, yeah, Booth, was brilliant. But it just, man in the world. It didn't, it didn't matter about the management team. The dynamics of the team were amazing because of the team spirit. And we ended up, we just missed out in the playoffs that second year for getting yeah. back you know, going into the Premier League. And it was just right. the whole five years it was there. I mean, apart from me busting my knee being out for a year I mean that was a bit of a downturn for me but everything else apart from that was just it was the best five years of my career I loved it loved every minute of it. and I, I was devastated about leaving absolutely devastated um, yeah and that's a different story and I, I think you, you're both absolutely spot on we've, we've done this just to prove like what, you, what you've said like Every ex-player that comes to Woodersfield absolutely loves the club, don't they? they they've got it, it stays in the heart. And, and I've been doing this 10 weeks, and all I do is send one text out to all the ex-players. And we've had what 25, 30, 30 players on these. And every single one has just come straight back and says, Yeah, I'll I'll do it of course I will. And, yeah. and it shows what the club's like, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, as, as Tom said, I think from when I first started. To when I left, at probably the same now. I don't know, but it was just a great group of people, um, and I, I don't just mean the players. I mean the whole the whole staff. When I first went, were just fantastic, um, and it, it couldn't have been it couldn't have been a better place to be. To be honest with you, definitely. I think you're, you're spot on, Kevin. Everybody thinks exactly the same. And you mentioned there Lou McCarry. Tom, you played under Lou at Stoke. Obviously, we played under Lou at Huddersfield. And what were you like at Stoke, Tom? Because it, it was a different manager that completely to any, anything we've had, wasn't it? If you were fighting with Lou. I loved him. I thought he was amazing. Um, I didn't see the, the bad side of him because the amount of games that we had at that time, it was over the Christmas period and it was, it was like... Uh, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, all the way through. So he couldn't really slog us. Some, I mean, the odd, the odd occasion, he would do a running session where he walked in and he would, he would let punish you. But I thought he was all right. I thought I quite liked him. Well, I, I, I didn't dislike Lou. No, I, I, I liked him. I think there was, there was method in his madness, to be fair. And, uh, and whatever he did, you, you'd slate him, but you'd still give 100% for him. And that was it. But is that because, you know, you just wanted to do that anyway um, for the club and the fans and, and, and win games? But uh, no, I didn't, I didn't dislike him. He was, uh, he was, he was all right. He got he his fit, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, what, sorry, Tom? You hated him, didn't you, Billy? No, I, I liked him. I, I loved him. But He's I, winning, I, you. I, got, you know what? Got, he got rid of the fitness coaches, didn't he? Because they weren't working as hard enough. You remember that? He did, yeah, he did, he did. <laughs> my, first, my first day, I, I'd come from Sheffield Wednesday and I hardly trained at Wednesday uh, and because of my knees. And first, oh, he had us running. He, did, he made us do that loop, round stores all on. <laughs> he did. And he, he made us jumping over these hurdles and doing these and, and <laughs> bending down. And I said, look, I can't do them. My knees, I can't bend my knees. I, I can't do it. He says, you will. He says, if you do everything that I tell you to do, and if, if you can't do it at the end of it, just you tell me and then pull out. And to be fair, I've, I, I hardly missed a game under Lou because it was the fittest I'd ever been. 
and my knees were the best I'd ever been. So, so to be fair to him, Lou were brilliant. It, Hard work. It was, it was spot it, on, to be honest with you. Spot on. And um, one of the questions here for, for Peter, Tom, what was the story about you leaving? And I'll ask you about you, that, Kev, as well. Uh, well, we got, I got back into the team. Um, we done my knee and then I think... Uh, I don't think who it was. Who was the left winger at the time? Uh, Where at? At Huddersfield. And he dropped back to left back at the time when, when I got Rob, Rob Edwards. Rob Edwards, that was it, Rob Edwards. Yeah, so Rob Edwards had, had done He was brilliant, to be fair. He's a good player as well, wasn't he? Very good. Cool. Technically amazing. Uh, what a player he was. And he, he sort of stepped into the breach uh, for left back and he did really, really well. And, then, and I obviously, when I came back, it was like in and out, in and out all the way. And uh, culminating in this last game, it was Bolton at home. And he had, um, we had spoke, I think it was December, we spoke in his office. He pulled me in, Jacko, Peter Jackson, and he said, obviously, we, the way you are at a club and you love the club, we want to offer you an extension to your contract. And it was running out at the end of that season. And I said, oh, you know I love the club. He said, I'll sign it in a heartbeat. He, says, uh, he said, right, we're, we're looking at a year. And I went, yeah, that's fine by me. Not a problem. So um, as time went on, nothing was mentioned about the contract. And I think it was February, March. We played Bolton at home. And uh, he pulled me in on the Friday tell me that I was playing, I was starting the game. And I went, oh, that's, that's brilliant, that's great. You, you do the set piece season, you're involved, you know that anyway. He pulled me in to tell me that I was playing, and I was like, oh, it's a bit strange, but yeah, it's great that. He says, uh, oh, and just, by the way, on a side note to that, um, we're not offering you a new contract now. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> he said, we're not offering you a new contract. And I was like, so, we're offering a new contract, and now you're taking it away. He went, yeah, sorry about that. So um, I think after after again, you took me off after 60 minutes and I just stood in the middle of the pitch and just clapped everyone in a circle and then walked off. And uh, he pulled me into his office after that again and said, what were you doing trying to embarrass me by doing that? And I went, what do you mean? He said, you told the press that you were leaving. I went, well, is that not the point? Is that not true? He went, well, <laughs> yeah, but he said, you were trying to embarrass me. I said, no, I was not trying to embarrass you at all. I says, I was just telling the truth. This season, that is what happens in football. There's, the truth never really comes out. I says, I was leaving the club at the end of the season because you'd offered me a contract and you, you took it away, and that was the truth. So that's what I said, um, and ended up ended up going to Burnley on loan straight after that. Uh, so yeah, it was a bit of a sour ending to it, and then I nearly came back um, when who was the original chairman? Oh, the original chairman, what's his name? There were a few around that time, weren't there? Terry. 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 Trevor. Terry. Terry. Terry Fisher. Terry Fisher. Yeah, when he took over the club again, when they were in trouble and then they came out of trouble. Well, there was a, I think there was a, a Legends do, wasn't there? A Legends Sorry. day. And we all got together. And um, in the bar, Terry Fisher, Terry Fisher told me, and he said, um, we're, uh, we're, we're taking over the club. He said, would you fancy coming back in the summer? And I went, yeah, in a heartbeat. He said, not a problem, that. I said, I'd love to come back here. At that time, I think I was at York, and York had just gone into the administration. And uh, I thought, brilliant, that. that's amazing. And then Jacko had come up at the bar, and he says, uh, yeah, he says, um, I'm going to be taking over as manager. Hopefully, he says, and I'll give you a phone as soon as, as soon as everything goes through. I thought, man, I'm sorted for this this summer. Huddersfield, eh, sorry, York's in administration. He says, I know I'm not I'm not going to be staying there. So uh, it came the summer, and it all went through. Terry Fisher had took over, saved the club. Uh, then they announced Jacko as manager. And uh, I think it was two or three days later, I got a phone call for Jacko, Sue, that had, Sue Beaumont had phoned me first. Says, uh, I've got uh, Peter on the phone, and I was oh, you know, that way you're so excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm back to Huddersfield. I can't catch my breath. 
ah, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And he just he says, uh, all right, Tom, how are you? I said, oh, bad, thank you. He says, uh, listen, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but we're not looking to bring you back to the club now. And I was like, what? You're joking. And I hadn't spoke to anyone that summer. I was devastated. I ended up having to go, I think I went to three clubs. I went to Barnsley on trial. I went to somebody at Doncaster on trial. And I ended up going to Dundee on trial. I ended up signing for Dundee at the time. But it was like the worst pre-season of my career. Because I wasn't settled. Because uh, I hadn't phoned anyone or tried to get a clubber in. Because I thought we'd go back to Huddersfield. But that, that's the story of me and Peter Jackson's relationship. So, And then I went, when we went to Carlisle and we played Huddersfield and we beat them. So I tried to rub it in a wee bit, but they weren't having it. <laughs> and, and Kev, I, 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 what about you? Obviously, you played that last year. Your, you played every single game apart from two games. You played in the playoffs under Lou and then yeah. left the club in the summer. That I couldn't understand that. Why were that? Oh, do you know what? can't remember. I think there was there were me and Martin Margotson. Um and it I can't I can't rightly remember what it was. I think there were changes going off at the club. And um I've got a funny feeling it might have been something to do with contracts and money and things like that. And they were just it was I, I can't even remember who was coming up with these things, but um, I think it was a lot to do with how we thought we'd been treated at the time because we'd been there for a long time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 it's nothing as dramatic as Tom's, to be fair, but it, it was something along that. I can't, I can't rightly remember it all, movie, to be fair. And, and obviously then, you... Both for you, Chris Billy, Matty Glennon, end up at Carlisle. Yeah. My God, I bet you've got some stories about that you four at Carlisle. Brilliant. It, it, yeah, it was good time, that Kev, wasn't it? Yeah. I think they had, it was, so did they have? They did five points at Christmas, didn't we? When we joined. Say again. They, we had five points at Christmas when we joined, didn't we? I think we joined we're, we're about through December. We were everybody else. Sorry? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was massive. It was a massive drop. But yeah, it was. Obviously, they got us in, and Seebs uh, Seebs was there, and um, of Dennis Booth, Dennis Booth there, yeah. brilliant. I, I, it was one of them. I don't know whether I've actually gone to Carlisle if Dennis Booth had to be there. But no. uh, he, he was just he was brilliant, bloke him. And then obviously Paul Paul Simpson did a great job up there as well. We've only got a couple of minutes left. I can't believe again how, how fat wow. fast um, that has gone quick. Yeah, mm. but I've got I've got to ask you, Kev, about Ben. He's obviously he's not on, and, and if Ben had been here as well, you and Ben Thorne had a bromance, didn't you? You were unse- inseparable at the club. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why he's not come on because we got divorced. He's got to keep a distance. <laughs> yeah, we did. It's. Um... Sometimes you just, you know, you hit it off with some people more than others, and um, and me and Ben, me and Ben got on quite well, to be perfectly honest. And it was, um, it was sort of, I mean, he, when when I first uh, left, split up from my first wife, I ended up going and staying at his mum and dad's house. Um, he just said, "Hey, you could come and stop, come and stop with me." And I said, well, what does your mum and dad say? He went, oh, they'll be all right when I tell them. Wait till we, wait till we get there, he says, and then I'll tell them. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's... Um, I haven't seen Ben for ages. I spoke to him now and again on the phone, but uh, I've not seen him for ages. And I've never read his book either, by the way. <laughs> and he said, you're not either. Well, I can remember you two going on honeymoon together. Oh, <laughs> mate. Was that your worst nightmare? Going on your honeymoon and then seeing me and Ben turn up. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget it. Obviously, we've we've driven up to Manchester Airport and we've got out of the taxi. Me and me. Well, we were getting married in Antigua, weren't we? We were getting married. Oh, we were. That's right. Yeah, you got married there. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got out of the taxi. We've got out of the taxi. Got our suitcases out. The very next taxi behind were you, Ben Thornley, and, and your missus. 
And, I, and I, obviously, I went at Wednesday then, so I'm not seen yet. And I said, "Oh, where are you going?" I said, "Oh, we're just we, we, we're going to we're going to West Indies." I know, you didn't say where you were going. I said, "Oh, so we like and not not thought out of it." And we didn't. I didn't see you at the airport again. And then obviously, we've come off the plane. Guess who's standing at carousel next to me? You two again. I don't know where your missuses were. I don't know where they, they were. And we I said, got rid of them. <laughs> they did. And then I said, where are you going? He said, oh, obviously, now none of us could remember which hotel, could we? So no. we, got, we, we all got a separate taxis again. And then I've pulled up with my wife. And then very next taxi, you and Ben have pulled up. So I thought, <laughs> well, it's a big hotel. Surely we're not going to see them. You were in the next, well, about six doors down from us. Uh, and everywhere I went, like like I said, you two were on honeymoon. You'd left your, your missus, hadn't you? Well, yeah, yeah, we had, to be fair. <laughs> you went we playing went. volleyball, water polo. Yeah. We to get together, but but it was great. I say, I'll never forget when I saw that taxi pull up a you two. Oh, I bet you thought, oh, my God, no. <laughs> Worst and I've got a look. And I've got lovely wedding photos of all my all my family there, and then there's you and Ben in your trunk stood there on my photos. <laughs> ah, but you look at that every day, don't you? So my memories of you, Kev, is ruining my career, doing my knee. I can't I can hardly walk properly now, and spoiling my honeymoon. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. You, Kev. You're and, welcome, mate. And, and Tom, I wanted to read this last bit. Uh, it's from Paul Cooney. Uh, obviously, he's on the call tonight, and he sent, he sent me this email. And he, he said, hi, hi, Andy. Not only is Tom one of my favourite town players, he's also a grand human being. In 2003, Tom signed for the Ds, which is obviously Dundee. Uh, Through only five appearances, we entered administration, which resulted in many players and staff losing their jobs. Although he wasn't going to lose his contract, Tom volunteered to surrender it and in doing so, saved the jobs of some young players. This was a lovely, unselfish gesture, typical of the man and was much appreciated in the city. I wrote to him and he sent me a nice Hamilton letter by retainer, thanking me for, for my good wishes and how much he loved his time at town. I'm not surprised to see that he trained as a firefighter after football, so I'm still helping people. Cheers, Paul. I thought I was, and that sums your time. You were loved by the fans, Tom, weren't you? They absolutely loved you. Well, cheering me I then. <laughs> I got off you, Kev. He, he, obviously <laughs> don't, he obviously don't know Tom very well. Already did my contract sorted with Carlisle. Don't tell him that. Don't say that. Don't spoil that now. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, we've gone up, we've gone over his hour. Uh, again, it's just absolute flow, and I've 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 loved it. I knew when we had you two on, we'd have some great fun. So can I just thank you for taking your time? We, we really appreciate it. It's been a, a great hour listening listening to you. Really loved it. And all the messages are all thanking you for, for giving your time up. So I really appreciate it. Ah, that. thanks, thanks for the invite, mate. It was yeah. uh, it's been grand. Definitely, well, definitely do it again if you're struggling. Yeah, really. well, <laughs> yeah. And obviously, when we get back to the stadium, you're all well invited down. Obviously, we'll, we'll all get back for, for matches if that's all right. And Kev, yeah, you, can pick a, you can pick a favourite player as well, Kev. What? <laughs> you can pick a favourite player as well when we go back to the stadium. Oh, yeah, we'll do, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I know it. I'll, I'll have to learn them all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, for everybody, thank you for listening. Uh, next week, we've got Anthony Pilkington, Gary Roberts, and just got to confirm what one more. So obviously that'll be the, the 2009 to, to 15, 15 even. And that's on Wednesday night. So 7 to 8 p.m. Again, don't forget the Magic Rock social media competition. If you want to enter, I've seen Anne there showing us the beers all, all night. That's where you can come win some Magic Rock beers. Uh, and again, if you want Magic Rock discount, just type in Boobie and you'll get that. Everybody, thank you all for watching. Tom, Kev, loved it. Great to see you both. Thank you, mate. Nice to see you both soon. Thank see you, you very much. Thank you. See you, mate. Thanks, mate. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Uh,